Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, we are talking Crave Beauty for one final time. And I'm gonna sit down today and discuss some of the recent developments with Crave Beauty and their Beat the Sun Sun Protector. If you remember back to, I think it was about a week ago, I did a video talking about the statement which was upcoming from Crave Beauty regarding their sun protection product. And we now have that statement today. In that video, which I'll leave a link to up there, I set out a few things I think us as consumers should be looking out for in terms of transparency, and getting the information that we need from Crave to be able to make informed purchasing decisions. I am going to talk through the statement that we've had today, thoughts, feelings, and kind of where we're going from here. So if you want to sit down, relax, and let's talk Crave Beat the Sun. So that video that I linked earlier, that was designed as a bit of a information piece around what us as consumers, we should be looking out for when brands talk about transparency, talk about doing the right thing and talking about, you know, products that may or may not live up to expectations. In that video, I called out what transparency looks like and what brands really should be aiming to deliver. On the back of that, Leah Yu, who is the owner and founder of Crave Beauty and a fantastic, fantastic content creator here on YouTube, did actually reach out to me and we had a little bit of a phone call, a little bit of a conversation around this and she set some of the background and I think added a lot of perspective which hopefully I'll be able to convey in this video alongside this statement which was already there. I've linked the statement which she made today below. I definitely recommend you check it out because it'll see everything in Leah's own words rather than getting it second hand through me. So I would definitely recommend you check that out. But let's have a quick look at what's actually happening with the Beat Shield. Well in a nutshell it's not coming back. So it's been discontinued indefinitely so the product as we know it isn't coming back. This will disappoint point a lot of people I know because there were some hardcore fans of this product. For me it was a product that was always really difficult to get here in the UK so it was never one that actually featured very heavily in my skincare routine though I did absolutely enjoy it and love it while I did get the chance to use it. For those that had it in their routine day in day out this will obviously be a disappointment. There'll also be some people raising concerns and being a bit alarmed about why it's disappeared especially if they've relied on it for their sun protection and I'll come on to that a little bit later. Leah really clearly in this video set out the time Lines, and I think this clarified some of the things. I said it was a little bit shady that we were given an announcement and then had to wait a week for the, um, you know, for the results and for the full statement. I, but actually, in context, I think when you understand that in the context of the timelines, I think this actually seemed reasonably reasonable because when you get a fresh batch of data on a product, it obviously takes time to um, read that, digest it, and evaluate your way forward. So I actually think in that context, I think the week was absolutely appropriate. I maybe would have maybe dropped the announcement about the announcement and just done the statement but you know this is a business decision and I think this kind of answers some of the questions people had about why announce the statement with a week is that a week to manipulate things absolutely not I think in this case it was just a week taken to actually you know digest everything and work a way forward in terms of those timelines obviously everything kicked off with the Korean sunscreen scandal which we've known and we've covered in depth on this channel anyway where a lot of people calling out the testing standards over in Korea I do want to stress really heavily just at this point that this isn't a Korean specific issue. Whilst now all eyes are on Korea and people are saying actually are the testing labs over in Korea actually doing their job right? So people even accuse them of maybe falsifying documents and things like that and we look at it as very negative on Korea. This is something that's happened in just about every region of the world. So I want to stress that now you know Europe had this same issue a few years ago, the US had this quite a while ago and so I don't think any region is genuinely blemished free and removed from um, any of this. So I wanted to call this out, but obviously we're now focusing on Korea because this is obviously the story of the moment. On the back of that, um, Leah and her team at Cray Beauty decided to test um, and reevaluate their product. This took a little bit of time because the manufacturers and the testing labs doubled down hard and saying there's absolutely nothing wrong. And I just think as a business owner, this must be a little bit difficult because when your manufacturer and the people you put your trust in are saying, no, categorically, you're all good. This does take a lot of time to work your head around. And I actually think they should be applauded for then going away and doing their own independent testing. Because that's almost going away and saying, Ugh. I kind of don't trust what I'm being told and I want to double check that. And I think that should be applauded and is a good thing. Um, Leah said that she went to a Korean lab um, as a brand. They went to the Korean lab, had it tested and it was proven to be SPF 55, which was in excess of the 50, which was advertised on the bottle. So far, so good. But again, thinking back to some of the issues and the ongoing issues in Korea and the testing, they wanted to then go and have it done by a third party, totally independent and more objective lab. Um, and so then had that done and that's when it was um, discovered to not be in that testing to be that SPF 50 plus that was advertised. And that's kind of how we got here. 
So, what do I think of the transparency issue? Well, um, whilst I would have loved, absolutely loved for them to just declare the SPF that it was independently measured at, and this is something I called out in that previous video, I do totally understand the reason why they might not do this, particularly considering some of the legal implications of what could happen. I would be much more angry about this if they weren't offering a full cash refund to anyone who wants it. So when it comes to doing the right thing, I think absolutely offering a cash refund to anyone that feels let down or unable to use the product that they bought with their hard earned cash kind of gets around some of the knowing the exact um, SPF. I feel absolutely fine using this product. And if somebody came to me and said, would I continue to, should I continue to use it? I personally would say yes. This isn't a Purito level scandal where it had ridiculously low levels of filters or a keep cool and soothe where actually in some instances it was so low they weren't able to test it. This is certainly not in this realm. And I'd say to people continue to use it. However, if there is nothing more important than sun protection. And so if you don't feel able to do that, then you can get a full cash refund, which obviously is a great thing. So whilst I wish they'd just come out and given the SPF, I think the way that they've handled it in terms of the refund does more than enough to offset some of the risk of that and gives consumers choice. And I'm all, all about consumers choice. In terms of the statements itself, I actually thought it was very gracious and well delivered. You know, I think the hardest thing in life to fake is sincerity. You know, you see so many of these apology videos on YouTube that are just cringe central. You know full well that they're doing it because they have to, not because they actually want to. And you could definitely tell from Leah's presentation, body language, and the way she approached this, that genuinely she was sorry to have let people down. And this must be so difficult if you own a brand and invest so much of your time and energy into it to then actually have to admit, you know, perhaps not everything went according to plan and you might have let some of your most loyal fans down. Also, I think huge credit should be going to get on and doing it yourself. If you look at how other brands have reacted to this um, and similar scandals, you never see them face the music themselves. The owners, the CEOs always hide behind some well typed out, legally watertight statement. And it all just seems a little bit try hard. Very rarely do you actually see them in front of the camera and saying, guys, I'm sorry. And we got that today from Leah. And I, do you know what? Personally, I think that should be applauded. So what now for Crave and the brand going forward? Well, I don't think we're in the territory of keep cool and soothe, which I think is the absolute 101 on how you don't handle a scandal or an issue with your product. I think we're much more in the Purito territory here, where I said, I think Purito did enough to warrant a second chance. And I think this is exactly where we are with Crave. You know, okay, one product didn't live up to expectations. It wasn't exactly as measured. However, I don't think this detracts from the fact that they've done their best in the end to put the consumer first and offer that refund along with that um, apology from Leah herself. I also think there's a lot um, of other products within this brand that actually do deliver really great benefits for the skin. So I hope they do ship internationally in the near future so more of us can enjoy products on Crave. I'm definitely going to give them a second chance and I think they've actually earned this the same way that I said Purito did. However, I always am mindful that you get a second chance. I'm never that gracious with third chances. So I think all the things that Leah has said the brand will be doing to make sure this doesn't happen again should be watertight and absolutely we should applaud that because I don't think brands often get a third chance and this is kind of the second chance cashed. I think this actually sheds a whole light on the Korean um, regulatory environment and how this works so hopefully they'll also be reflecting because you know one issue such as Purito we kind of you can chalk that up to experience then it's time and time and time again this is happening and when it comes to brands like uh, Leah who have clearly done their due diligence in the background and really gone to a whole host of efforts to get this right to then still be deceived by manufacturers and by testing i you know there's more of a systemic and endemic problem there that hopefully will be addressed Leah very kindly um, offered if people feel it's necessary to do like a Q&A session where I could put your questions to her as the brand owner and we can kind of get some answers. And again, I think that's really good in terms of um, transparency, openness and willing to kind of answer questions face to face. So if you do have any existing questions and you think that'd be really useful, leave me a comment below. But share what your thoughts and feelings are on Crave on the back of this. What are your thoughts about the wider sunscreen industry and what products are you reaching for um, to get that guaranteed locked in? protection. Hopefully this draws a line under all of this and I just wanted to do this video to kind of complete the series because I did feel that my last video you know set out some expectations and it'd be wrong of me not to follow through and give my thoughts and feelings on the back of that statement. So hopefully you see it in the context of those and wherever you are in the world guys stay safe stay well and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye.